In three shift system into one and it did it. The truth is that there is an ethnic argument against education. And that ag argument has become a Nigerian argument because it is preventing people who should be at school from going to school and they are using that argument to stop the rest of us from moving forward. 20 million children out of school and there is no national program for ensuring that the next school year all of them will be at school. No. That is not just and that is not just a, a an educational issue. It is an issue as I argue in a paper. Look, every African state ought to give at least 15 years of education to to, to, to their children or they should not be members of the EU. Those are issues okay. that I cannot raise, that I can raise before. <laughs> people who have run central banks and people who have been governors because they do not do what was necessary. Those who did what was necessary did not 
need to spend the money in the way that most governments do. The British Council, in the last council of Great Britain, they did not know me, they did not know my father, but they sponsored my projects in a way that no half council in my country will sponsor it. They followed the budget and they made sure that I, I got it. The point I'm trying to make here is this. You have to plan a country. And I want to all prove it that if you plan a country, it works. And if by planning a country, you can put every child at school, there will be no need to expect a birth father to do the job for you. I don't want to be liked by those who will not accept a free education policy because okay, we are using the military argument. Okay. Oh, okay. I think I think I think Michael, you take a think I 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 Yes, now I'm not sure something like because uh, this issue of education is extremely important. Now, first of all, if you look at all the research that has been done, if you look at some of the Peter Tibbet Derana and his work on British colonial education, if you look at the role of the areas, um, even in the colonial days in girl child education, you'll find that this myth that um, either the traditional schools of the north or the north establishment has been itself against education is a myth. Okay, the British had a colonial policy that was initially designed to ensure that the North did not have Western education. The first three British governors that came to northern Nigeria, came away from Sudan, they had a difficult time with the Mahdi. The British policy at that time was to ensure that they did not create a progressive northern Nigerian elite that would give them the problems they had with the Muslims in India and in Egypt. Now, this is all documented by, so I can refer you to a book called Education um, and Cultural Change in Northern Nigeria by Peter Timidorana. You can read it. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've, you've read it all here. And now, I want to say something about my personal experience. Before I became in here, I had the same elite conception that my people in the North did not want to educate their daughters. That we need to go and talk to them and preach to them and explain to them the virtues of education. When I became in I started going out to the villages and the towns, and the schools were not there. How do you blame a poor man for not educating his child when you have not built the school? Sorry, I'll get a piece. Um, I, 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 let, me, let, me, let me make the point. You, you say it's an ethnic issue, but it is an actual it is, it's actually, you know, it's actually a government's issue. It is a failure, it is, you know, the only reason the South West is educated today is because Chief Awolowo provided the schools. No, 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 Chief Awolowo started the free education policy, Chief Awolowo started the South West on the path to education. Right. I'm on the mission of this. Now, if, if the leader, now, if the political leaders, if the governors of the North have not built schools, if the governors of the North have not invested in education, if the governors of the North have not trained teachers, blame the governors, blame the political leader, don't blame the ethnic group. No. I will tell you why. I'm still going to why not. Because, because many of the people who, who put their children in school, they build the schools. I will make them do the schools that their children attended. And where there were no schools, so, 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 so,
I'm considering you, Your Highness. I'm considering, I'm considering oh, yeah. Your Highness a victim who has oh, yeah. received oh, yeah. what he owes his people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's just agree that yeah. the debate, a great debate has started. But somebody posed the question, are we not right for a talk of the talks that is the mother of all talks? And somebody said, can we through this medium urge the president to convey the talk that we discuss all these issues? So that's uh, a question that is there. But I know there are still people if he's still, I think his hand is still off, up. if he wants to say, can he come in now while Princess Ola B.C. Shambudu also uh, should be ready to talk. We we'll just give those two a uh, chance and then uh, Odia will, uh, will make a final comment and then we'll bring in uh, the Aula uh, Foundation to wrap it up. It, it'll be very interesting. We still have uh, 470 uh, participants online and I, I must remind us that we still have with us uh, uh, the special guest, uh, Chief Ebeka Anyaoku, the chairman of the occasion, uh, Professor Ole Soinka, as well as the royal father of the day, the Sultan, and his eminent. So it, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a very interesting uh, uh, crowd. So uh, to all intents and purposes, the discussion, the talk of the talks has started. And it must continue. Um, is Otuba Akogo Tolarini you see coming up? Yes, please. I'm here. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, please go on, sir. Well, I'm going to be very brief. Just two uh, minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Yes, minutes. That's the correction. Uh, it is not. Yeah. It is not. It is not the fault of the government as such. I was in Sokoto with uh, Governor Batara for about a month or two uh, at that time. He built many schools, and the children did not come to the schools. The schools were empty. That is not the fault of the government. That was the fault of the parents of the weather could not, that could not make them come to school. Therefore, it was ethnic, not, uh, not, not issue of governance. Before I built schools, and built the children were not there. Thank you. For that uh, clarification, uh, is... Um, uh, Joy is still ready to talk, or I can bring in um, uh, Dr. Milafia. If it's, uh, if it's, uh, I can see his hand up. You can speak now. If you can unmute yourself, Dr. Milafia, uh, former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank, is this? <laughs> is his hand still up? Well. Um, okay. A word of Samuel or Devumi, the hand is up as well, otherwise we'll, we'll just take the last comments from um, uh, Odia, if uh, those that we have called are not... Uh, they should just unmute, I have, um, they should just unmute their microphone and speak. Okay, Samuel, Samuel Devumi is ready. Okay. Please go on. If Malafia is uh, the ask, you can get ready to to unmute and record this. Please go on. I'm not hearing you. Okay, we, we are we are past the we are past eight thirty now, and uh, we should be. On the home stretch, there are more. Any of those that have called can come on board. Then, please, can they speak? We need to speak. They are all located. Okay, now, Claudia. I mean, you are on, but um, you, are, you can't hear what you are saying. Um, uh, I'm unmuted, but uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, you can go ahead. We are hearing you now. Okay. Uh, I'll go. 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 Okay. I just want to react to, uh, I like Abisi, Labudu, Sabisi. I really uh, share the perspective of uh, Sir Ahmadu Bello. When Dr. Nanibi Azikri 
told him that we should forget our differences. So Ahmadu Bolo told him, we should actually recognize our differences and then negotiate how we, we can naturally exist from there. I do not agree that we should be forced to share our natural identity as a Yoruba man or as an Arusa man or as a Fulani man or as any ethnic uh, uh, configuration. What is most important is to recognize all those differences and now sit down to negotiate. This is what I want. This is what I can give. We have to do a full respect of the sense of loyalty that we say to them now. I mean, uh, 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 concept of federalism has taken care of this. We only require honesty of purpose from the leaders to recognize this. The instrument to achieve the unity that we want is there if we want it. But because some people don't want the system to be changed, they are not really uh, uh, making use of their valuable tools to get us uh, uh, across the line. That's just uh, what I wanted to put here. Okay, thank you very much. Well, that's very good. Can uh, Obadia Malafia come on board now? And uh, nice yes, hello. Okay, yes. okay. Princess, please go ahead very briefly. Hello, sir. I know that. Um, hello, sir. Hello? Yeah, the princess is, uh, is on the floor now. Can you hold on a bit? Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, thank after her, you can come on. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Um, my take about this discussion, which is exactly what Nigeria needs now, is that all the eminent people that are here have spoken. For the past one year, it's been the same pressure on this government, our government, to do the needful. We want to come together. We have all agreed now that we are talking. We should talk. We should come together. What could our this eminent people, the Isami Sultan of Sokoto, Professor Walisha Yaka, uh, Chief Hanya Oko, and other Nigerians, what, how, which other way do they think they can go that the government will convey this conference? Other than our young people going out every day to revolt and being killed. We don't want a revolution. We don't want war. It is the responsibility of our government to do the needful. How can these eminent people do? What can they do? Is it possible for them to put themselves together in a few number and meet with Mr. President or the government so that the government can get up to do what is necessary so that we don't continue to lose the lives of our young people and making people to lose interest and confidence in Nigeria? especially the young ones. A lot of old people are here in Nigeria who are okay. crying every day because who cries in their rooms because they don't have their parents in their, their children in Nigeria. And the pain has not been encouraging. It gets, gets poorer. Thank I you, want to appeal. I want to appeal to our eminent people to put themselves together, people that are respected, not to that people who think they will take money. All the people here, they will never take money from anyone. Let them get others together and meet the government so that the government can help us. Thank you, ma'am. Hello, sir. Hello. The point that we have made Hello, is sir. echo that call that the talk Hello. has already started. We want it formalized. Hello, yes, sir. Please, very briefly, one minute, yeah. please. My one minute, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Quickly. Yes, sir. Now, we cannot preach peace to people who are being killed. The violence going on, we must find a way to stop it. And uh, all other discussions must go to where are we going to stop, because that is what is driving this nation to disintegration. For now, there is fire on the roof. Talking about destruction, the room, the sitting room, the kitchen is out of place. The structure is on fire. How do we stop it? I think those who organize should find this as a major point of contact. This killing, damage, kidnapping must stop. Or else, nothing can stop us from uh, the, 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 the disastrous direction that we are taking. Thank you, sir. I agree with you, 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 you that this, this illness must stop. But it is precisely 
in the process of discussing how we educate our children, that we, we sensitize people to the necessities around education. We cannot, we cannot say that the discussion of how to send people to school does not, will not involve how to save lives of the children at school. Because those children at school who are being kidnapped are frankly being discussed as part of the educational, educational argument. And one of the reasons why ethnicity must always be brought into this is this. All the ethnic groups in Nigeria are mobilizing to save their life, the lives of themselves and their children. You cannot, you cannot run away from your parents who is after the protection of his or her child. It is important that we bring all Nigerians into the discussion of education because that is where it is high. One of the points I want to, to make in response to an earlier statement. I said something about how having codified our own educational policy. Simply put all the knowledge in the indigenous language into the English and all the knowledge in the English language into the indigenous language. Universalize that relationship between ourselves and the colonizer and between the different ethnic groups in the country and nobody will be left out. There will be no nationality on top of the other. The fact that some people are not going to school is a fact of caste systems in parts of Nigeria. You cannot pretend that you don't know this because at the end of the day, if the leaders of the North are serious and they want to do it, they have the will, I mean if they have the will to do it, they have the technique to put all the children together. But I think that there is a problem involved in putting all those children together, putting them at school. And that problem is nothing to do with the ethnicity of school. It is simply a class system that does not know how to change without failing. Hello, can I speak now? Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, can I speak now? Uh, yes. May I want to speak. May I say, please. Oh, I was, I was waiting for you guys. I'll give you just one minute because I'm running up this. Oh, okay, I agree. Thank you so very much to everyone. I just want to say three things. I mean, one question. Uh, oh dear. Uh, okay. How would the good sage have made of everything that is happening now? How do you think he would have reacted? I mean, the great chief of Barcelona in Wolo. You would have forgotten that against the right individual communities. Yes. You would have mobilized the two individual communities to stand together. Even if you don't have a weapon backing you, if it is known that you are standing together, you are already yes. on the way to winning. And I think that the point you made earlier about uh, ethnic nationalities is very valid. Because the propaganda in the north was that uh, Chief Obafemi Awolo was a tribalist uh, and so on. But my reading of him was that he was not at all. He was a realist. And he understood that you cannot build a democracy on a fraud or on a lie. It would never work. Um, even the USSR, that was a socialist communist state, understood the imperative of recognizing ethnic nationality. And even countries that are unitary states, monarchies like the United Kingdom, have been very clear about you know, the nationality of the, the Scots, the Irish, the Welsh, and in Spain, the Basque country, uh, Catalonia, and the Western America. Some person here is. Sorry? Okay. okay. Anyway, the, the, the point is that, and the final point is that, look, people have a right to defend themselves. Number one, it's in our uh, constitution, the right to self defense. It is in our statute books, it is in our laws, and it is in conformity with international law. 
the state and prescribes that all communities that feel an existential threat to their lives have not only a right, they have a duty and a moral obligation to defend themselves. And universal well, justice, yes. natural justice and equity also acknowledge that. So, I mean, so in Sunday, before all those people defending their communities, they have a right to do so. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, my brother. Uh, thank you for your contribution. I think, um, oh dear, you, you, you have really started something that is unstoppable. This national discourse is bound to go on. We cannot afford to just gloss over these issues and free will as a country. We must uh, take them on board and you have definitely set the stage through this 2021st uh, in a series of Obafemi Awolo lectures by the Obafemi Awolo Foundation. It's been a wonderful encounter. It's been a, a very glorious evening. Uh, at the point we got to over 500, about know, five, 530 participants. Now we are down to just 471, still a very impressive number. So you see what you have done? We have kept everybody awake. We started about 6 o'clock and now it's almost 9 o'clock and we have to yield, we have to run back. Anything that has been given, we definitely have an end. Next, the discussion is bound to continue. Uh, I'll be clapping and I hope others will join me in clapping for all the that has engaged all of us um, in the last, um, uh, I mean, almost two and a half hours. And I didn't see you drink any, any drop of water. Please get some water. Already, if you have some water, that you will drink later. Thank you, Dr. Okay, I will. Mean. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, that brings us to the end of the question and answer after the very, very stimulating lecture by Odia Ufeimu. He has, uh, had, yeah, he, he has spoken on the POSA, Nuga, Nigeria. And the last word is he had told us what the same Baba himself would have done in this circumstance. What a nice way to wrap up this lecture. It is my duty now to hand over to uh, somebody who will um, a, a, a brief summary because I don't think you can summarize within a short time all that have been part in this lecture. The chat group has been watched with comments and um, everybody has been engaged. I've seen arguments and counter arguments. So, uh, Professor Junoke Yakub, we just um, uh, tell, tell us a bit of the summary while after her, the chairman of the occasion, Professor Wally Swinka, will come up again and the executive secretary, executive director of the foundation, Dr. Ulo Adosumu, will then wrap it up. It has been a very wonderful time. I thank you for the opportunity. Uh, welcome to the debate that is about to continue. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Fabbaldi. And um, um, Your Excellency is um, the Executive Director um, of the Obafemi Yawolo Foundation, the convener of this event. I want to congratulate you on such a successful outing this evening. And um, let me also extend um, sincere regards to um, all the eminent uh, personalities on the panel this evening. The chairperson, um, Professor Walisho Yuka, our royal father, the special guest of honor, the distinguished guest speaker, of course, um, ladies and gentlemen on, on the forum. I'll just take about two minutes to sort of um, give what I see as the framework of what we have been discussing since morning um, for, for the last two, three hours. Um, this has been a very erudite lecture, wide-ranging indeed, um, very engaging, and in fact, we would never end the discussion. But I will speak to three things that come to me from the discussion. Neither Nigeria to uh, um, Femum speaks of three questions. Where is Nigeria going? Where is Nigeria to be first? Secondly, where is Nigeria going? And thirdly, where should Nigeria be going? Those were his definitions. But permit me to add perhaps two or three more. Are we agreed on where we should be going? Secondly, how should we get there? 
And thirdly, how do we manage these two processes? And I think that's what all the discussions have been about. And of course, we've discussed the issues that subsist in our country today, the tensions between structural issues and leadership issues, between identities on one hand and institutions on the other hand, and governance on the other hand, the tension between security and fear, between traditionalism and modernity. And these are so many other tensions in our polity today, in our ideologies of them, and in the way that we approach the solutions uh, to these problems. The third frame I wanted to speak to that comes to me from the lecture is Awonawa's legacies and how these remain important in charting the path of the future. In particular, the guest speaker um, spoke about education, and that has preoccupied us so much. Um, if there is one thing that any Nigerian remembers Chief Obata Nawila Woko, it is his investment and his advocacy for democratized and accessible education as a path to Nigeria's future. Unity must be worked for. It cannot be assumed. And also federalism. However, a federalism that is pragmatic and that works. And uh, um, I think finally, constitutional engineering. I see these as basically the takeaways from the lecture, among so many things that have been discussed. And I just want to close by going back to Chief Obafemi Meola's um, off-cited quote um, that Nigeria is not a nation, it is a mere geographical expression. There are no Nigerians in the same sense as there are English, Welsh, or French, and so on and so forth. And to simply close by saying that that concept, that idea still subsists to be and that um, it is a call, a running call for us to continue to negotiate, to construct deep construct and reconstruct the idea of Nigeria as a nation, to imagine it as a community that can outlast its problems and its um, deficiencies. I thank you very much for the opportunity and I want to say um, it has been indeed very um, um, engaging. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, you okay? That's splendid. Fantastic. It's now my honor to bring back the chairman of this occasion for his closing remarks, <laughs> Professor Wally <laughs> Soinka.
start working. It's obvious. And you can't continue along the city route and say that you're working at making something work. That is a sign of a kind of a, uh, madness, so to be very good. Yeah, uh, and in that direction, I want to make it be for governance. Stop being so timid. Push this federal envelope as far as it will go, even while we undertake the technical aspect of restructuring, whether in terms of dialogue, national endeavor, faction, um, constructing um, the evolving new constitution, or whatever. Something has to go on all the time. After all, we've had so many of these contracts. And so my plea is to governors to start with that you are charged with the immediate responsibility of the welfare of your own people in whatever terms. And if you look at the Constitution, if you study the Constitution very carefully, and I have done this with lawyers, and it seems that a lot can actually be done at this moment as we continue with seizing a greater autonomy for your own states. And that's what I mean by pushing the envelope, the federal envelope, as far as it can go, even with this impossible document which we have. To seize what power, what authority that you can derive from the Constitution. Consult with your lawyers. I have consulted with them. I talk to them all the time. And they also express the view that the governors are too timid. There's too much centralized mentality embedded in their minds, and they are afraid to come out of that cocoon. And so please remember that your primary responsibility is not the center, but the people, the states below their welfare. So take in your hands any form of authority that you can, even from this Constitution, as it stands at the moment, where we're working towards a more honest, a more people-oriented kind of Constitution. Examples are all about you. If necessary, constitute legal teams to advise you on what areas of the Constitution you can tackle to deliver to the people what you are elected to deliver. It's my only plea for tonight. Thank you all so much for such an engaging uh, experience. Good night. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> it is now my most pleasurable duty to move the vote of thanks. Um, the fact that we have this lineup this evening um, is testament to the fact that Nigerians still want this country to work despite all our difficulties. We have on the panel, we have Professor Shoyinka, we have Chief Fanyoko, we have the Sultan of Sokoto discussing this issue, knowing full well that probably sparks would fly, yet they came and they are willing, and they have stayed throughout, well, for, the, for the last three hours they've been with us, talking about the future of Nigeria. So I want to thank them most, most sincerely for their patriotism and their passion for this country, which is not in any doubt. If there was ever in any doubt, I think this evening has put page to that. I did not, you have not come because I invited you. You have come to honor Chief Aulo, and that gladdens my heart. I thank you all most sincerely. And I know that this is just the beginning of a process. You're doing your job. <laughs> you are one of us. 
And, and that was a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant submission. Um, we all know now that we need to see where we are and we need to decide where we want to go. And we, we have to have a consensus about where we want to go. I believe this evening has started that. And that has to go by so with the solutions to the current insecurity. That government has to be up and doing, and I would like to join my voice to those who have already said on the charts and in the question and answer that uh, particularly our three distinguished uh, guests today, um, the Sultan, Professor Shoyinka Chifanyoku, to use your influence to encourage government to move in that direction. We have shown here that Nigerians are willing to sit down together and talk, even if the process is uncomfortable. We are willing to talk because we want a solution to this to, to this nation's problems. So I thank you all very much indeed. Oh dear, that, I can't thank you enough. Andrew Moke, um, this is why I love working with clever people. Uh, everything that has been said in three hours, you summarized in five minutes, and you summarized it so brilliantly. Um, Jumoke is a member of our technical committee in the Arulo Foundation, and aren't we lucky to have her on board? I thank the former Emir of uh, Kano for joining us tonight and making the discussion so so exciting. Uh, it became a dialogue between him and Odia. Um, and we all, we all enjoyed that. I thank everyone who has attended, everyone who has sent in questions. I do apologize that we haven't been able to, uh, to allow everybody to speak that wanted to speak. I thank the Oni Opife. He was here with us, but um, I believe he's gone now. I thank Papa Ayuade Banjo. He was also here. I noticed that there were a lot of people from abroad, from America, from the UK, um, and um, I just thank you all for making time to be with us. Um, as the moderator said, we now have a duty. Um, at my 70th birthday, I asked Professor Shunka to write a tribute. And in that tribute, he, he said very clearly that his was going to be a challenge, that I have a legacy to project. Now, Professor Schwenker, I'm beginning to understand, well, the situation has thrown me really into it. And now I have a duty to make sure that the Aurora Foundation makes its platform available for exchanges such as this. Um, this is why we are non-partisan and non, non not political, well, political in the sense that we deal with issues that have to do with human beings, but we're not partisan. And this is one of the benefits of not being partisan. So we will be willing, and I'm sure we're going to do something in the next few weeks as a follow-up, we will work on it and we will do follow-ups. And um, I hope that every time we approach you, even if you don't come yourselves, you can always, always nominate people who can participate in such um, dialogues. So once again, I thank you all so very much. And I wish you a very good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Fantastic.
Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of the newly formed Udurua Nation. London. Have you heard that Heritage Television has come up with something new? All your functions and celebrations can now be multi-camera, live stream. That was only reserved for the rich and famous. Having a function in London can be viewed clean and clear immediately from any part of the world. Trust Heritage TV to give you a better reach. Heritage Television also does photography that will make you the envy of all your friends and family. Heritage Television is the best. All your functions like birthdays, funerals, weddings, church anniversaries or harvest. Heritage Television is the master. We are in the heart of London with an ultra-modern equipped studio. You can call us on 020-800-46100 or email us info at heritagetv.co.uk or mobile 0734-1234-560. Heritage Television will do you proud. <laughs> 